Hi, I'm Grant Johnson. And I'm Susan Johnson. Welcome to our new DVD series, The Achievable Dream. We're the founders of Horizons Unlimited, the global home of motorcycle travelers. For over 10 years now, we've been helping people just like you to achieve their dreams of motorcycle travel to faraway places. The one place I looked for information was Horizons Unlimited. The information that's on it is brilliant. I found the, the Horizons Unlimited website was totally invaluable. We rode this bike two up around the world from north to south, through Europe, Africa, the Americas, Australia and New Zealand. We took over 11 years to do the trip because we travel very slowly. To help you do it, we took what we learned from our own travels and from helping other people on our website, bulletin board, and at HU Travelers Meetings Worldwide and created this new series of DVDs. And we know lots of other travelers. People who have done amazing trips through every continent and around the world. We ask these veteran travelers to tell us their stories, give us their opinions, and share their hard-earned knowledge with you. And of course, travelers have lots of different opinions, often contradictory, so you have to make your own decisions. In this DVD, we'll talk about planning your trip, where and when to go, budgeting, dealing with paperwork for you and your bike, and much more. Sooner than you think, you can be enjoying twisty mountain roads, stunning scenery, and new cultures. So let's meet some of our contributors. If it's something that you really want to do, do whatever it takes. Anyone can do it. Anyone. Doesn't... Oh, you've got to have a bike license, I suppose. I started riding a motorcycle three months before I got to the Sahara Desert at the beginning of my trip. I had people that used to ask me, you know, on my trip, they'd say, you know, uh, what are you doing at your age? And I'd say, hey, what do you want me to do, watch television? Neither of us were actually motorcyclists. None of us had driving licenses, motorcycle licenses, or motorcycles, but we sort of realized that that was going to be the way to, if you like, get as close as possible to the peoples and the cultures through, through which we passed. We got all the way from Los Angeles to the bottom of Chile, just with um, a map that was the size of a postcard of the entire American continent. And, but there was only one main road out there, so we just followed that. Before my trip from Alaska down to Argentina, I'd only ridden old um, British bikes from uh, old vintage 50s and 60s bikes. Um, I'd, I'd only ever been abroad on one of them once. I'd been to France for about four days. So that was the extent of my, um, of my traveling on a bike. And then I met Johan and I realized that, you know, there's someone else with a passion this, the same as mine, is to go out and, and explore other lands and, and, and not to fly there, but to actually do it by road. And uh, we just started discussing in more and more detail and, and from a short trip only to Tanzania it grew to let's go all the way to the UK. You know, because you always have things that you want to do in the future, you know, it's like not necessarily climb mountains or, but you know, you have goals that you set yourself. And mine had always been to travel the world in an interesting way. And I couldn't think of anything more interesting and more liberating than to jump on a motorcycle and just head off. My first journey, which lasted four years, really was a life-changing experience. I learned just about everything I know from that. Uh, so yes, it has changed my life. I can remember when I had a wife, a mortgage, and a dog, and I don't have any three of those things any longer. It was probably the most fantastic experience of my life. The thing that makes it a little bit different is I started out at 62 with Parkinson's. How did that affect your trip? It affected the trip in that I was a little slower than most people would be. I had a little more difficulty getting on and off the bike, but it in no way affected what I saw or how I felt or how it completed my dream. I've never met anything but nice people and, and kindness and, and, and help everywhere you go. There are lots of highlights but mostly the people. It's, sometimes it's breath, breathtaking how helpful they are, how friendly they are. I would meet people in one town and they'd take me out, take me out to dinner, want me to go out party all night with them, give me a place to stay. And then I'd leave that town in the morning and a couple of times those guys 
would call bikers in the next town. I'd get to the next town, and there'd be a group there waiting for me at the edge of the city limits when I got there, and I had to repeat the whole thing again, which was great. I got to meet a lot of great people, and I keep in touch with a lot of them, and I, I will visit them again next year. But sometimes I just need a break. <laughs> the hospitality will kill you. And so the trip changes, and it becomes more about uh, encounters with people and meeting as many people as you can. And for me, that's why when the motorcycle breaks down, it is an excellent opportunity. I look at the bike, I take things apart, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, maybe I fix it, maybe I don't. And if I can't get it resolved, then Aaron and I sit back and we just say, I wonder who we're going to meet and I hope they're nice. Because the reality is we're not getting out of the current situation without anybody without the help of somebody else, and it's an opportunity to meet somebody. And for me, I just, it's all about exposing yourself to those opportunities to meet people, and we're really looking forward to getting back on the road and going down and revisiting with some of the friends that we made along the way. So get out there and do the same.